Hi, my name is Dr. Ross Hauser. Welcome to Caring Medical Florida. For about 30 years, I've been treating successfully upper cervical instability with prolotherapy. Uh, in the last year or two, made this graph with my team, this illustration to show the many facets of upper cervical instability. Like most people are unaware that even autoimmune diseases through uh, impairment of vagus nerve function can cause autoimmune disease. They, when vagus nerve function is inhibited because the nerve impulses are not getting through because of cervical instability, a person can get mast cell activation syndrome, eustachian tube dysfunction that can cause Meniere's disease, dizziness, tinnitus, vertigo. They can also get postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome. So POTS can actually be cured by cervical stabilization by prolotherapy. Upper cervical instability can also affect the cervical sympathetic ganglion, which sits at C2, to give you a host of symptoms such as dizziness. When a person has cervical instability, specifically upper cervical instability, there is a greater tension on the spinal cord. The, the spinal cord uh, then can pull on the brain stem and this traction then can cause all kinds of problems with the relay centers that are in the brain stem. Like for instance, the nausea center is in the brain stem. So you could have cervical instability and just feel nauseated all the time. The brain stem also is where blood pressure control and heart rate uh, center is. So somebody who has heart arrhythmias and nobody knows the cause of it, it could actually be from cervical instability. Uh, the vertebral artery runs in the transverse foramina of the cervical vertebrae. So if the cervical vertebrae are moving too much, you can get compression of the vertebral artery. The vertebral artery supplies about a third of the brain. It also supplies the brain stem and it supplies the cerebellum. So vertebral basilar insufficiency can cause drop attacks dizziness, impairments of the cranial nerves. It can cause terrible balance problems. Um, upper cervical instability also can obstruct cerebral spinal fluid flow. So the intracranial pressure can go up. There's lots of people who just constantly feel pressure in their head. If you're one of those, you probably have upper cervical instability and need prolotherapy. When your intracranial pressure is increased, you can get changes in your vision. You can get double vision, or you can get graying of the vision. You can even have it where you see an image and you look away and you still see that image. There's all kinds of vision problems that are from upper cervical instability. If you have vision issues and nobody can solve the problem, I would suggest that you get a digital motion x-ray and see if you have upper cervical instability. And of course, when you start disrupting cerebral spinal fluid flow, it's almost, it's as if the brain becomes a toxic uh, toilet, if you will. Like for instance, you need the cerebral spinal fluid flow to be normal, to flush all the toxins and all the waste products from all the activity, all the brain activity. So if that's not occurring, obviously you're gonna feel like, geez, I can't focus, I can't think, I can't remember, I have brain fog. All this stuff can be from upper cervical instability. When I treat people with upper cervical instability, with prolotherapy, one of the main things they find is they just feel so much better. Their thinking gets clearer. Their energy goes up, and a lot of that is because of this. It's well known in uh, neurology that the trigeminal nerve, that the trigeminal nerve, trigeminal neuralgia, even migraine headaches are because of irritation of the trigeminal nerve. 
Well, it turns out the cervical trigeminal nucleus in the spinal cord, it goes all the way down to C3. So upper cervical instability can affect this nucleus, which can give you facial pain, can give you trigeminal neuralgia, can give you torticollis, can give you cervical dystonia, all kinds of cranial nerve symptoms. If you have any of these disorders, any of these symptoms, dizziness, vertigo, migraine headaches, balance problems, brain fog, autoimmune disease, um, allergy symptoms, been diagnosed with Meniere's disease, you should consider that you actually have upper cervical instability as the cause of your conditions. This can be easily documented by a motion scan called a digital motion x-ray. And if instability is found, the prognosis of resolution of all these symptoms and syndromes is excellent with prolotherapy. Depending on the severity of the instability will determine how many visits of prolotherapy that a person needs. But often, anywhere from three to eight visits is the norm. The visits are normally every four to six weeks. Again, if you have any of the symptoms that I've discussed here, I really think you should consider getting a digital motion x-ray and receiving prolotherapy.